Alright, good. We got that out of the way. Alright, so I would pause this and write these down real quick. Great, so these are verbal phrases that we're going to make into mathematical operations. They're big ones, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, right? So these are synonyms for addition. When you hear these words, they also mean addition. The sum, that's obviously the answer to an addition problem. So if I ask you to find the sum of seven numbers, that means add them. Plus is obviously addition, eight plus two. Total, find the total, that means add them all together. More than, eight more than a number, that's addition. Increased by x, increased by seven, that is also addition. Subtraction, difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So if it says find the difference, you know you need to subtract. And if it says find the difference of seven and eight, seven goes first, all right? If it says find the difference of a number n and two, it's n minus two. Whatever is spoken first goes first because you know subtraction order matters. 6 minus 2 is 4, 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Less than is subtraction, 8 less than 4. Um, minus, obviously, is subtraction, and as well, decreased by is subtraction. The real good ones now, multiplication, times, of course. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. Don't even know why I wrote this one, multiply by, of course, that's multiplication. This is a good one, of, oh, this is, happens a lot with fractions or decimals. One fourth of 24, that means one fourth times 24. All right, that's multiplication. Division, quotient is the answer to a division problem. Divided by, divided into, obviously. But per is a really big one. Uh, for example, miles per hour, miles per hour, you would take the miles and divide it by the hour, or the, yes, by the hours, excuse me. So that is division. Per is a big one in the real world. All right, let's translate the following phrases. So three-fourths of a number. Of, remember, we talked about is multiplication. So it's three-fourths times a number. We don't know what that number is, so it's a variable n. Now, we could have written it that way. We could have written it three-fourths times a variable n. Um, but what I want you to get used to is writing the well, a number and a variable without when you multiply without any sign. So I want to write it like this. This is called, the number part is called the coefficient of the variable, all right? So 3 fourths of n is 3 fourths times n. 5 less than a number. Well, this could be 8 minus 5 or 5 minus 8. We need to, this is kind of tricky, right? Which is 5 less than a number? 5 less than 8 is 3. So 8 minus, this one is the one we want. So we don't want to write, start with the five first. Even though it's first here, sometimes you got to rearrange things. So do I know the number? No, that's a variable. Let's call it um, g. So five less than g is g minus five. Quotient is division. So we are going to divide seven and a number. So seven divided by a number, we don't know what it's called, I'll call it a. I write a lot of my division with fractions, and that's something you need to get used to. Yes, seven divided by a is the same thing, all right? But we're gonna now in algebra write division problems with fractions. Sum of a number and eight. Well, what is sum? That's addition. We don't know what that number is. I'll call it x plus eight. The sum of a number and eight. So the next phrase Mr. Bruss wanted to know was, uh, where is the bathroom? A very common one, you need to know that where you're at, so in Ireland. And the other thing is, he didn't understand that, you know, in Ireland they, they speak English. But, I mean, Irish is a language, so I, I taught him. Um, Buffio ch Chiclini Fasta. I told him that's how you uh, said, um, where is the bathroom? Had he bothered to Google Translate it, it would have come out, do you have adult diapers? I, I guess I, I just picture myself seeing him go and ask for adult diapers, and, and it's pretty funny. Eh, maybe that's just me. Oh, I'm sure it's just me. All right, so I want you to pause this, write down a, a few of these definitions and these conversions real quick, and then we're going to go over these. Great. So, a rate. A rate is a fraction that compares two quantities measured in different units. So different units is key and they are going to be compared using division. So for example, eight miles per one gallon. 
Maybe you want to find out how fuel efficient a car is. So you're comparing how many miles you get for how many gallons. Uh, maybe you compare miles per hour. You want to find speed. You do 240 miles per three hours. We have two different units and we're comparing these two different things. It's called a rate. Now rates are great, but we really like unit rates. Unit rates are really nice because it's a rate when the denominator of the fraction is one, much like this one. So I can find out that if eight miles, I have one gallon. If I want to find out how many two gallons was, it'd be easy, 16. It'd not be so easy if I had it here, but it is easy to find a unit rate once you have this. All you have to do is divide. 240 divided by three, that's going to give us 80 miles per one hour, all right? So unit rates are very nice. The denominator is one. Now we're gonna use these conversions and we're gonna use them and we're gonna convert things Find some unit rates, a little more complicated unit rate, all right? So a roller coaster travels at 240 miles, so 240 miles in two hours. Two hours, all right. Now we wanna find the unit rate in feet per second. So down here, all the way down here, I'm gonna put feet per second. I, that's just, that's my goal, that's where I'm headed, all right? All right, now when we're doing these, we wanna keep something in mind. The great thing about math, in my opinion, is the number one. It's a great number. Six divided by six is one, right? Anything times one doesn't change. One times $2 billion is still $2 billion. It doesn't change anything. So I can multiply anything by one, and I can have one come up in these fancy, fancy words, right? So now one looks different in different things. One mile is 5,280 feet. All right, I can write that out. Now, you'll notice that when you have two numbers on top and bottom that are the same, they cancel. For example, if I had miles over miles, I have the same thing over itself, that's gonna equal one. So I start and I write out what I wanna get rid of. I wanna get feet, and right now on top I have miles. So for me to get rid of it, if it's on top, I have to put it on the bottom. So now I need a conversion for miles because I'm gonna cancel these out. So let's see, I know one mile is 5,280 feet. So if, it, if a mile's on the bottom, 5,280 feet goes on the top. And I'm even gonna cross out the miles so I know I'm done with it. Now I look, feet, and that's what I want. Ooh, I'm good with that one. On the bottom, I have hours and I wanna get to seconds, not quite so good. So now I know hours is on the bottom. To use my canceling out to get a one, it's, if it's on the bottom, it has to go on top. So what is, can, uh, equal to one hour. Well, one hour is 60 minutes. So, 60 minutes. I look up here, I cross out my hours, checking out my units. On the bottom, I have minutes, seconds. So, I'm not quite done yet. If minutes is on the bottom, to cancel it out, I have to go on the top. One minute is equal to 60 seconds. So, I cross those out, and now I notice on the bottom, I have seconds, which is what I want. So now I can actually do the multiplication. I'm going to multiply 240 straight across the top times 5,280 times 1 times 1. On the bottom, I'm going to multiply 2 times 1 times 60 times 60. Now, you may not be able to do this in your head. I didn't do the top one in my head, obviously. That is 1,267,200 feet. On the bottom, I could have done this in my head. If you couldn't use a calculator, that's fine. 7,200 seconds. Now we want a unit rate. That means I don't want to have this in the bottom, so I'm going to divide this out. So 1,267,200 feet divided by 7,200 seconds is 176 feet per second. That backslash is the same thing as divided by feet per second. That way we don't have to write it over one and you have your unit rate. We'll do another one of those in a minute, but the key here is remembering if you want to cross something out on top, it's got to go on the bottom, all right? Something on the bottom has to go to be crossed out on the top. All right, so what, we have two more things. Pause the video, write these down real quick. Great. So the first one is an equation. What is an equation? It's a mathematical sentence formed by placing the equal symbol between two expressions. So remember, variable expressions, 2x plus 4, that is a variable expression. 
It is not an equation because it's just one of them. If I had it equal to another variable expression, 5x plus 10, now it's an equation, all right? That makes it an equation. Likewise, or very similarly, inequality, it's a mathematical sentence formed by placing one of these symbols, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to, um, and even you could include not equal to in that uh, between two expressions. So 2x is greater than 4. Remember, greater than um, opens up, it always opens to the bigger number. So 4 is bigger than negative 1. 4 is the bigger number. It opens that way. And this is the exact same thing as this. I know it sounds different. Negative 1 is less than 4, but it is the exact same thing. I could even read this, 4 is greater than negative 1, because 4 is greater than negative 1. All right, I just read it this way, okay? Not a problem. Take a second, copy these down, pause the video. All right, so real quick, equal sign, it's equal to, it's the same as. These are other things that may come up. Less than, again, it points to the thing that is less than. If you're reading it from left to right, it is... Six, uh, 4 is less than 6. And another word, you could say fewer than. 4 is fewer than 6. Less than or equal to is less than or equal to. Now this one, it says at most or no more than. This comes up and it freaks people out because at most you think greater than. But let's say it says Mr. Sullivan wants at most 10 students. At most 10 students. Well, we know the number of students he wants to be at most... 12. That means he can't go over 12, so it could be less than 12, or it could be equal to 12. He wants no more than 12 students. All right? If I wrote this, this means he wants the number of students to be bigger than 12, and we don't want that. All right, so it's kind of opposite, but it, it makes sense if you think it through. Is greater than, the same thing as more than. Greater than or equal to is greater than or equal to, like this one at least, or no less than. Um, Mr. Sullivan wants no less than 100 A's, all right? So the number of A's he wants to be greater than or equal to 100, because he wants no less than 100. 100 is lowest he'll go, okay? The solution of the equation, or the solution of an inequality, when you substitute a number for the variable in an equation or inequality, and the result is true. So we're going to check these to see if the result is true. All right, I'm going to plug in 8 and see if the two sides are true. So 9, remember this is 9 times 8 minus 4. 9 times 8 is 72 minus 4. Does that equal 70? 72 minus 4 is 68. And that is not 70, so this is not true, this is false. All right, there's no leeway in an equation. They have to be exactly the same thing. Let's come over here, four times eight plus eight, is that greater than 10? 32 plus eight, is that greater than 10? Is 40 greater than 10? It sure is, so this is now true. All right, um, we're going to solve some equations pretty quick just using mental math. All right, in other words, I have this equation here. 6 plus y equals 14. What does that mean? It's 6 plus what number? See, I don't know what number goes here. So 6 plus what number equals 14? Now, I'm sure most of you got that right away. Well, uh, 6 plus 8 equals 14, Mr. Selwyn. All right, 6 plus 8 does equal 14. So our answer is y equals 8. This is just the foundation of learning how to solve, all right? And we could check our answer, 6 plus 8, yep, 14 equals 14, 8 is the solution. Let's try this one. 9 times b, remember if it's not written or if it's a number and a variable right next to each other, that's a multiplication. So what times 9 is 27? Uh, that's a really hard one, man. I don't know, uh, oh, not 3. 9 times 3 is 27. All right, so the answer here would be B equals 3, and that's just real simple, okay? We'll get harder equations as we go, but this is just good for you to recognize now. If you got stuck on the first one, I kind of inserted some things in here for you to think about and try it now. So pause the video and fill in the blanks now. All right, great. So let's see. 
So I know miles to cancel, miles has to go, if it's on top, it's got to go on the bottom, and I know that one mile is 5,280 feet. So my miles are canceled. And I want to go to feet per second, so I have feet on the top, which is great, so I'm done changing the top. I know my hours to cancel, I know one hour is 60 minutes. All right, I have minutes, I need seconds, so I have to cancel my minutes, one minute is 60 seconds. So I come over here, I'm gonna multiply 30 times 5,280 times one times one, and I get 158,400 feet. On the bottom, two times one times 60 times 60, that again is 7,200 seconds. I want a unit rate, so I have to divide it out. So when I divide that out, I should get 22 feet per second, all right? Down here, check to see if it is a solution. So, wherever I see my variable, I'm gonna plug in three. So five times three minus eight, is that less than 20? 15 minus eight, is that less than 20? Seven is less than 20, so yes, it is a solution. And there you have it. So, um, before you go off and try to practice, I have a short clip here, a video clip that's kind of funny. It's all about translating um, words uh, and it's kind of funny, so uh, I hope you enjoy it. Good luck on the practice, the mash check, and I will see you on the flip side. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sinking. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Mayday, mayday.